Welcome to our next JS tutorial. Let's take a tour of what we have built together. You can see that we have a beautiful home page with a stunning bird image. We have a navigation bar consisting of options like blog, login and sign up. Now on the blog page, you can view our blog post. If you click on a blog post, you will see the details such as the author's data, title, excerpt, date, image, description, quote, and so on. Additionally, you can like and comment this post. But before doing so, you need to sign up. You can sign up using the navbar link. Let's do that. When you sign up, your data will be stored on the MongoDB website. Here you can see the user data. You can subsequently log in with your email and password. Now you can like and unlike this post. You will see the total number of likes. And you can also comment on this post. Let's say helpful blog. And in here you will see the total number of comments. After commenting you can delete your own comment. And the total comment count will update accordingly. You can also see the create page where you can create your own blog post. The blog image will be stored on the Cloudinary website. And you see the image. If it's your post, you will have access to two buttons, edit and delete. However, if you are viewing someone else post, you would not see these buttons as you are not permitted to edit or delete other post. Now you can edit the post using the edit button. If you make changes to the title description or image or so on. The post will update accordingly. When updating the image, the previous image will be deleted. And the latest one you select will be displayed like this. You can also update your profile. Also, you can update your user data. If you don't see the image here, simply reload the page and it will appear so this website promises to be fun for you i hope you will learn a lot about nextjs mongodb and cloudinary so let's dive into it Okay, I am going to create a new folder somewhere on my desktop. So for example, I am going to create a brand new empty folder on my desktop. The name does not matter, but why don't we call it maybe nextjs underscore blog website. And then just drag and drop this folder on Visual Studio Code to open it with Visual Studio Code. I am going to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you want. Let's start developing. So the first part for our application is to install the next app. Open up a new tab and go to nextjs.org. And here you see the command. Just click on it to copy this command. 
open up terminal and let's paste it here in the terminal hit enter press y hit enter now obviously in order to run that command you need to install node.js on your computer so make sure you have node.js installed let's go ahead we will get some question what is your project named i am going to use this directory so let's type dot and then if we want to use typescript i am going to say no to that yes lint say no just want to keep this simple we want to use tailwind so let's say yes we will say no to having a source directory and then yes for app router no for alias it will be installed soon okay we successfully have initialized our next.js application let's type npm run dev to run our server now in your browser visit localhost colon 3000 and there you go this is our home page and everything you can see here is coming from let's go into the app.js file and then paste.js file from here now i am going to remove everything inside that return i am going to add a div and inside that div let's have an h1 tag in here let's say home page below that h1 tag let's have an paragraph tag i'm going to add some dummy text now save the changes back in the browser now you can see our content now i want to add some basic css let's go into the global.css file i'm going to remove everything from here and i want to keep these three lines because we are going to be using tailwind now save it let's go into the tailwind.config.js file let's remove this background image and in here i want to add some colors that we are going to be using so inside this extend object let's say colors colon curly brackets and then i have added some colors that we are going to be using also we want to add some screens so inside this theme object let's say screens colon curly brackets don't forget to add comma here and inside this screen object let's say a small screen will be 480 pixel medium screen will be 768 pixel and large screen will be 1024 pixel now save the changes let's go into the global.css file now i am going to add some basic css so in here let's say layer base curly brackets now i want to add some css for the body tag so let's say body curly brackets and then apply bg dash secondary color and this secondary color is coming from here space text color will be white color don't forget to add semicolon now save it below that now i want to add some style for header tag so let's say h1 comma h2 comma h3 comma h4 comma h5 comma h6 and then curly brackets apply font will be bold below that let's say h1 curly brackets apply i want to add font size so let's say text dash 3 excel and for the medium screen and up font size will be text dash 5 excel that means 3 rem or 48 pixel similarly i want to add font size for the h2 tag in here let's say h2 and in here let's say text will be 2 excel and for the medium screen and up text 3 excel similarly let's copy this h2 tag and paste it below in here let's say h3 text will be excel and for the medium screen and up text will be 2 excel that means 1.5 rem or 24 pixel i want to add a style for paragraph tag so let's say p curly brackets and then apply text color will be paragraph color and finally i want to add some style for section tag curly brackets apply 
and then I want to add some padding vertically so let's say py-10 now save it and you can see the changes now I want to talk about routing imagine we want to create a block page like this now if I want to do this in this version of next.js I have to create a folder and then a page.js file okay let me show you what I mean inside this app folder I would create a folder called blog then inside this blog folder I want to create a page.jsx file it is important and really important for you to call it page.jsx because that way the next js will detect that it's supposed to be a page now type rafce press enter in here let's change it to blog now save the changes and this is done and that way we can create a page similarly we can create login page sign up page create block page user page and so on so let's do that Now we can visit our login page, similarly sign up page and so on. Next up at the top I want to add navbar but the question is how can we display inside every single page like home page, blog page, sign up page and so on. Well to achieve that let's go into the layout.js file and inside this body element and above the children let's have an h1 tag and in here let's say navbar goes here now save it now you can see the navbar text inside of every single page like sign up page login page home page and so on that's very nice so now let's create the actual navbar i'm going to remove this h1 tag now I want to create a component folder in this directory so let's say components and then navbar.js file so let's say navbar.js type rafc press enter save it let's go into the layout.js file and up at the top right here let's import navbar component so let's say import navbar from components slash navbar now in here let's say navbar and then self closing tag now save it you can see navbar which is coming from here now let's create our actual navbar first i'm going to import link so in here let's say import link from next slash link we don't need this text anymore so i'm going to delete it inside the div let's have a link inside that link let's have an h2 tag inside it let's say light and then span tag code dot that span tag is going to have a class name equal to i want to add a custom class called special dash world let's copy this class let's go into the global.css file and below that base object let's say layer and then components curly brackets in here let's say dot special word curly brackets and then apply text color will be primary color now save it let's go into the navbar.js file also save that file we are getting error because we have to add href value so in here let's say href equal to slash that means home page now we want to center our content so let's go into our telewind.config.js file and below this extend object right here let's say container colon curly brackets center will be true 
I want to add some padding. So let's say padding colon curly brackets default will be on RAM and for the small screen and up padding will be 1.5 RAM. Now save it. Let's go into the navbar.js file. Give that div a class name equal to container. Now save it. Now you can see our navbar is in center position. I want to add some padding vertically. So let's say py-2 and height will be a-16. Now below that link tag, I'm going to add an ul tag. Inside that ul tag, let's have a list item. Inside it, let's have a link tag. And that link tag is going to have an href value equal to slash blog. And in here, let's say blog. I'm going to duplicate this list item for more times. In here, let's say create dash blog. Also in here, let's say create. Let's change it to user. In here, let's say profile. Let's change it to login. In here, let's say login. And finally, in here, sign up. In here, also sign up. Now save it. Now I want to add some CSS. So in here, let's say display will be flex. Align items will be center. So let's say items center justify between. Now save it. Let's add some CSS for that UL tag. Class name equal to display will be flex. Items will be center. Gap 3. Now let's test this out. It's working perfectly. Now I'm going to display different navbar depending on if the user is logged in or not. So here we don't have authentication yet. We just started making our application. I'm just going to name some variable. So let's say constant logged in is going to be set to true. Of course, later we are going to do this programmatically with authentication. But right now we are in the start of development process. So now we are going to do it just like this here. So if login is true, we are going to display something or we are going to display something else. So let's start writing our condition. So here if we are logged in, we are going to show here create and profile links so i am going to cut these two list items and paste it right here otherwise we want to show these list items so i am going to cut these list items and paste it right here now save it it's working because if login is true then i want to show create and profile links as you can see here Otherwise, if login is false, then I want to show login and sign up links. For now, I am going to set it to true. I will scroll down. Let me look at the reference design. Instead of only profile text, in here I want an image and a drop down menu like this. So let's get started. Let's get rid this link and let's have a div tag. That div is going to have a class name equal to position will be relative. Inside it, I want to add an image tag. Before adding the image tag, I am going to add an image folder inside our public folder. As you can see, I already added an image folder where we have some images that we are going to be using. Okay, now I will scroll up and in here I'm going to import image. So let's say import image from next slash image. Below that I want to import profile image. So let's say import John from at that slash public slash image slash John dot jpg. I will scroll down and inside that div let's have an image tag. And in here, we don't write image like this, like the default HTML image tag. We do it 
like this and we import it from next.js slash image so this is another thing that is different from react so in here source will be john alt will be avatar below that size will be 100 viewport width give it a class name equals to i'm going to give some width height rounded full and cursor pointer now save it now you can see our profile image now let's focus on our drop down part so in here i am going to add on click method i am going to have some function which is handle show drop down this is just for toggling the drop down i will scroll up i want to import use state from react so in here let's say use state and in here it's going to be a state here so in here let's say constant show drop down comma set show drop down equals to use state is going to be equal by default to false now save it okay now we can see an error now the question is why we got the error because we can use use state only for the client component by default each component is a server component in next.js so we have to convert this component to a client component by using use client so we have to add use client so let's copy this one and up at the top right here just paste it now save the changes we did not define this function yet so i'm going to copy this one and right here let's say constant handle show drop down equal to arrow function and in here let's say set show drop down prev true now save it now we are not getting any error very nice now if you want to know more about client component and server component open up a new tab and go to nextjs.org click on this get started button and then rendering and then composition patterns i'll scroll down and here you will get when to use server and client components you can read this section to know more about server component and client component okay now i will scroll down and below that image tag so if show drop down is true we are going to display close icon profile link and logout button before we do that we have to install the react icons library so i am going to stop the terminal so press ctrl c and type npm i react dash icons hit enter again type npm run dev to run our server again i want to import close icon so i will scroll up and below that profile image let's say import curly brackets ai outline close from react icons slash ai i will scroll down and in here let's have a new div and that div is going to have a class name equal to position will be absolute top 0 right 0 background color will be primary color light and finally i want to add some padding so p-5 now inside that div i am going to add close icon give it a class name equals to width will be full and cursor will be pointer below that let's have a button tag in here let's say log out below that let's have a link tag in here let's say profile give it a href value href will be slash user now save it now if i click on this image you can see close icon logout button and profile link but if i click on this close icon nothing happened so what can we do i will scroll up and i am going to duplicate this line and in here let's say handle hide drop down and in here let's say false now let's copy this function i will scroll down we need to add it for each item so in here in here and here so i am going to add on click method equals to handle hide drop down now save the changes now if i click on this close button you can see it's closed similarly if i click on this logout or profile button it's working perfectly very nice 
now if we use wrong url like blocks we need to customize this page to achieve that i have to create a file called not dash found dot jsx okay let me show you what i mean inside this app folder let's have a file called not dash found dot jsx the name is very important you cannot write not found or no found it should be not dash found otherwise it would not work so in here let's say r a f c e press enter let's say not found now save the changes reload it and you can see not found text which is coming from here for the wrong url we can custom our not found page so in here i am going to remove this text and this div is going to have a class name equal to container h dash screen display will be flex flex direction column gap 5 justify center item center and inside that div let's have an h2 tag and in here let's say not found below that h2 tag let's have a paragraph tag in here let's say could not find requested resource below that i'm going to add a link so first i'm going to import a link let's say import link from next slash link and in here let's say link return home and that link is going to have an href value equals to slash this means home page now save the changes now if i click on this return home link it takes us to the home page very nice let's go into the navbar.js file i will scroll up in here let's say false now save it next let's make it clear which page we have currently visited by adding an active class now how do we check the current url path well it's simple we can utilize something called use path name okay let me show you what i mean up at the top right here let's say import use path name from next slash navigation and in here let's say constant path name equals to use path name parenthesis i will scroll down and in here let's say class name and then curly brackets if the path name equals to slash blog then output will be text color will be primary color and font weight will be bold otherwise our output will be nothing now save it now if i click on this blog nav link as you can see it changes the color and font weight we can do the same thing for the other links so i am going to copy this class name i will scroll down and paste it for each link so i am going to paste it here let's change it to create dash blog again i will scroll down i am going to paste in here let's change it to login similarly in here let's change it to sign up now save it let's test this out and it's working perfectly now we can focus on our home page let me look at the reference design here is the actual design for the mobile screen but for the medium screen and app i want to show this beautiful image so let's do that let's go into the home page that means app and then page.js file we can change the name like page.jsx also in here we can change the name navbar.jsx let's go into the page.jsx file this is our home page i am going to remove this div let's have a new div and that div is going to have a class name equals to container display will be flex flex direction column for the medium screen and up flex direction will be row gap 5 i want to add some height so let's say cal 100 vh minus 4 ram now inside that div let's have a new div that div is going to have a class name equals to 
flex basis will be 100 percent so let's say basis full display will be flex flex direction column justify center for the medium screen and up basis will be two third inside it let's have a paragraph tag let's copy this text and paste it right here give it a class name equals to special dash word font size will be text extra small this special word is coming from here now below that paragraph tag let's have an h1 tag that h1 tag is going to have a class name equals to pb5 that means padding bottom 20 pixel in here let's say the words and then let's have a span tag rarest and then break tag birds let's copy this class name and paste it right here we don't need this font size so i'm going to remove this one now save the changes let's go into our actual design we are getting error because we have changed the name of navbar.js file so open up terminal and i'm going to stop the terminal press ctrl c and then run npm run dev to run our server again i am going to remove our catch file and type npm run dev again to run our server now we are not getting any error nice let's go ahead and below that h1 tag let's have a paragraph tag i'm going to copy this text and paste it right here now save the changes now it's looking good on our small screen now let's focus on our large screen below this div right here let's have a new div and that div is going to have a class name for the medium screen and up display will be block flex basis will be one third inside it let's have an image tag i'm going to import the image so let's say import home underscore bird from public slash image slash home underscore bar dot png so in here source will be home bar alt will be home bar size will be 100 viewport width give it a class name equals to width full height will be auto now save it and you can see our image but for the small screen we don't want to show the image so in here let's say hidden that means display will be hidden for the small screen now save it now it's looking very good let me look at the reference design now we can focus on our sign up page let's go into the components folder i am going to create a new file called signup form dot jsx now type r a f c e press enter save it let's go into the app and then sign up folder and then paste dot jsx file and in here i am going to import sign up form so up here let's say import sign up from from components and then sign up and in here let's say sign up form and then self closing tag now save the changes you can see sign up form text which is coming from here now let's create our actual design i am going to delete this div let's have a section tag with the class name of container inside it let's have a form tag and that form tag is going to have a class name equal to border to border color will be paragraph color border radius will be large so let's say rounded large i want to add maximum width so let's say max dash w dash small mx auto i want to add some padding horizontally and vertically and finally space dash y dash 5 
inside that form tag let's have an h2 tag in here let's say sign up give it a class name equals to text center and then a special word below that h2 tag i want to add input tag but we want to create a input component so let's go into the components folder and i am going to create a new file called input.jsx type rafce press enter i want to pass some props so in here let's say type value on change name level and finally placeholder in here let's say class name equals to space dash y dash one we don't need this input text so i'm going to remove it let's have a label tag in here let's say label which is coming from here below that label tag let's have a input tag type will be type which is coming from here similarly value will be value on change will be on change name will be name placeholder will be placeholder and finally i am going to add class name equal to width will be full background color will be primary color light i want to add some padding border radius will be 8 pixels so rounded large now save it let's go into the signupform.jsx file first i am going to import input component so let's say import input from dot input file now in here let's say input self closing tag i want to pass level that will be name type will be text and name will be name now save it i am going to duplicate this input field two more times in here let's say email name will be email this one will be password type will be password and name will be password below that let's have a button tag type will be submit give it a class name equals to i want to create a custom class name called btn and width will be full and in here let's say sign up now save it let's copy this class name let's go into the global.css file and below that special word class let's say dot btn curly brackets and then apply background color will be primary color text white i want to add some padding horizontally and also vertically rounded large and finally i want to add some hover effect so let's say hover colon opacity dash 90 now save it let's go into the sign up form and below that button let's have a paragraph tag give it a class name equal to text center in here let's say already a user below that first i am going to import link tag so let's say import link from next slash link i will scroll down in here let's say link login give it an href value so let's say href slash login and class name will be text color will be primary color now save it we can add space here now save it now it's looking good similarly we can create our login form just like this so let's go into the components folder i am going to create a new file called login form.jsx let's copy everything from here and paste it right here now i am going to change it to login form let's copy this one and paste it right here let's change it to login we don't need this one so i'm going to remove this input field in here let's say login and in here let's say sign up and the href will be sign up let's copy this text and paste it right here now save the changes 
okay we have to import this component so let's go into the login and then page.jsx file first i am going to import login form component so let's say import login form from component slash login form and in here let's say login form self closing tag now save the changes and you can see our login form finally we can create our footer i am going to create a file called footer.jsx now type rafce press enter give it a class name equals to py10 text will be center inside it let's copy this text and paste it right here let's have a break tag let's copy this text and paste it below now save the changes let's go into the layout.js file and below that children props i'm going to add footer component so first i'm going to import that component so let's say import footer from component slash footer and then let's add that footer component in here so let's say footer self closing tag now save it now you can see our footer in every single page now we are going to create an api for the sign up page now the question is how we are going to write our api in next.js so inside our app directory we are going to make an api folder so let's do it usually you can write your api routes everywhere but don't do that write it inside the api folder because we want to have a clear separation of code so just make an api folder inside the app folder inside that api folder let's have a new folder called sign up and then a new file called route.js and it must be named route.js otherwise it would not work so our api address will be localhost 3000 slash api slash sign up and this api is coming from here and this sign up is coming from here okay so here of course in order to be able to write our code we need to connect to our database so open up a new tab and go to the mongodb website and let me click on sign in button i am going to log in with my credential now let me click on this drop down button and then view all organizations create new organization i am going to name it next chase website i will scroll down and then click on this next button then create organization new project i am going to name it next.js blog website next create project again create choose free option i have no intention to pay for this project and then create button and here i am going to create username and password so username will be light code camp and password will be light code camp on to three you can create whatever you want then create user i am going to add ip address 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 and finally finish and close click on this connect button and then mongodb for vs code this is the api address that can be accessed from anywhere let's copy this address I want to make an .env.local file inside this directory. So let's say .env.local. We make .env.local file because this data is a secretive information. We don't want to share our URL to anyone. So that's why we use environmental variables. So in here, let's say mongodb underscore URL equal to and then the URL. Let's change the password to lightcode camp 123 now save it next we need to install some packages so i will just stop the server for now so let's press ctrl c and type npm i we need to install a package called mongos to connect with our mongodb database and then we will also install a package called bcrypt and bcrypt package will be useful for hashing our password okay let's go ahead and press enter so all the packages have been installed now type npm run dev to run our server again 
if you go to the package.json file here we can see that we have the packages next let's have a new folder in this root directory called lib and then a file called db.js and i am going to paste my code this code is a specific way to connect to the database using Next.js. So here I just don't want to write the entire code. I don't want to lose your time. Of course, you can view it for yourself and you need to know that it works here. Now save the changes and close it up. Next, I am going to create a model for the sign up API. So let's go ahead and let's have a new folder called model inside it let's have a new file called user.js first i am going to import mongos so let's say import mongos from mongos below that i am going to create user schema so let's say constant user schema equals to new mongos dot schema and then object and here i am going to add name email password and so on so let's say name colon object type will be string and required will be true i am going to copy this name object and paste it seven more times i will scroll up this one will be email and email should be unique so let's say unique true because you cannot have two accounts with the same email this one will be password so let's say password this one will be designation so let's say designation we don't need this required in here let's say default will be empty i will scroll down this one will be avatar so let's say avatar type will be object and default will be empty object this one will be age and default will be empty this one will be location default empty string and finally this one will be about and default will be empty string okay now we can include time stamp so in here let's say time stamp will be true time stamp creates two fields one for the creation time and another for the last update this helps in tracking when data is saved to the database and when it is modified and finally i am going to export our user schema so let's say export default mongos dot models dot user or mongos dot model user comma user schema this user schema is coming from here let's change it to models now save the changes okay we successfully create our user models now i am going to show you how to use this model so let's go into the app and then api and then sign up route.js file finally we can start writing the code here first i am going to import model so let's say import user from models slash user below that i am going to import bcrypt so let's say import bcrypt from bcrypt next i am going to import connect from lib and then db.js file so in here let's say import connect from lib slash db and finally below that i am going to import next response from next slash server so here i am going to create a function so let's say export asynchronous function and if it's a get request use capital letters the same applies to post put and delete in this case since we are creating a register so it's a post request so let's say post and then in here let's say request curly brackets i'm going to add try catch block let me write the code for the catch block it will return next response dot json and then message 
will be post error sign up make sure to import next response from next slash server now the question is how can we access the data well we can access the data via request over here okay let me show you what i mean in here let's say constant data equals to await request dot json parenthesis below that let me console dot log and then data and for now below that let's say next response dot json in here let's say for now new data and then status will be 201 now save the changes to check data you can use postman but i am going to use thunder client so make sure you install thunder client extension you can click on this extension button and search for thunder client here is the extension i am talking just install it after installing that you will see the thunder icon click on it and then new request i will scroll up let's copy this api address and paste it right here and then select the body and then json i am going to add our data so in here let's say name will be john email will be john at that gmail.com and then password will be john123 now if i click on the send button we are getting error because we have to select post request now send it again and in the terminal you can see the data exactly as we have written in here but we are getting error because we did not add return in here so let's say return now save the changes let's test this out again and now we are not getting any error perfect okay next let's save the data to the database close it up so in here we can destructure the name email and password so let's say name email and password we don't need this console log so i'm going to remove it and in here let's say constant new user equals to await user dot create and then name email and password let's copy this username we want to response back with the data that we saved into the database so in here let's say new user now save the changes let's test this out and let's send it again and finally we need to connect to the database so let's say await connect and this connect is coming from here now save the changes let's test this out let's send it again okay you will see the new record this means we successfully saved data into the mongodb okay let's go to the mongodb website and check if the data exists over here or not so close it up let's go to the database i'm going to click on this database and then browse collections and you see the data is over here now if i send it again we are getting a message which is coming from here because we added unique property for the email in our model we already have the email in the mongodb database that's why we are getting an error message we can make our error message more specific so let's go into our router.js file and above the new user right here we want to find the email in our database if that email exists we want to send a message so in here let's say constant is existing equal to await user dot find one and then email if is existing then i will return next response dot json and in here let's say error message user already exist now save the changes let's test this out again now we are getting error message user already exist which is coming from here and finally let's hash this password so what can we do is below this if condition 
i am going to hash the password so let's say constant hash password equal to await bcrypt dot hash password comma 10 and in here let's say password colon hash password now save the changes let's test this out let's change it to john2 at that gmail.com in here let's say john2 and click on the send button and you will see the password is hashed refresh it also in the mongodb you can see the password is hashed perfect so in this position our sign up api is complete now let's start with the functionality of our sign up page okay here we are getting an error this is called hydration error to solve this problem let's go into the component and then sign up form i will scroll up first we need to convert this component into a client component so up at the top right here let's say use client and then i'm going to add a state so let's say constant hydrated comma set hydrated equal to use state in this case the default value will be false make sure to import use state from react now below that let's say use effect again make sure to import use effect from react arrow function set hydrated will be true now if not hydrated then returned will be null now save the changes now we are not getting any error we can do same thing for the logging component so let's copy this code let's go into the login form.jsx file and paste it right here i'm going to change this component to client component so let's say use client and i'm going to import use state and use effect from react now save it now we are not getting any error again let's go to the sign up form component now here what we need to do is we need to create states for storing the details so here we have these three input fields we have the name email and password and we need to store it inside state so that we can send it to the api so in here let's say constant state set state equal to use state and in here let's say initial state and up here i want to create initial state so let's say initial state equals to name will be empty email and password similarly let's create state for the error success and for the is loading i will scroll down and in here let's say if error then i want to render this div in here let's say give it a class name equal to text color will be red 700 similarly let's create for the success message i am going to copy this one and paste it below and let's change it to success and finally in here let's say if is loading then text will be loading otherwise text will be sign up now save it i will scroll up now if i type here user exist you can see that the error message is being displayed similarly let's say success message you can see success message but i want to change the text color so i'll scroll down in here let's say green now our text color is green we don't need this text for now now what we need to do is when we make changes to this field we need to store the values over here so here in the name field let's add an on change and that will be handle change also let's add value and that will be state dot name 
let's copy this value and the on change method and paste it right here this one will be email again let's paste it here this one will be password so let's change it to password now up right here i am going to add a function name handle change in here let's say event in here let's say set error empty below that let's say set state will be dot 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 state and then event dot target dot name will be event dot target dot value next in the form tag i am going to add on submit method and that will be handle submit let's create this function so in here let's say constant handle submit equal to arrow function let's change it to asynchronous function now the first thing we need to do is to prevent the default behavior so right now if i click on the submit button the page is refreshes so we need to stop that so let's type over here e dot prevent default now save it now if i click on the submit button the page does not reload let's go ahead and type constant i'm going to distract data like name email and password from the state so in here let's say name email password equal to state now let's check whether any of these values is missing so let's type if not name or not email or not password then set error will be all fields are required and then return null next i want to check email so i am going to use regex and finally i want to check password length below that i am going to add try and catch method first in here let's say set is loading true below that i want to create new user so let's say new user equal to name email and password which is coming from here below that let's say constant response equal to await fetch and then the url address so in this case our url will be this one so let's copy this one and paste it right here then curly brackets in here let's add headers content type will be application slash json below that let's say method will be post and body will be json dot stingify and then new user and this new user is coming from here now i want to add if condition so in here let's say if response dot status equal to 201 then set success message will be registration successful below that i am going to add set timeout and time will be one second so let's say 1000 now i am going to import use router so up in here let's say import use router from next slash navigation and in here let's say constant router equal to use router i'll scroll down and in here let's say router dot push slash login and scroll will be false basically it says that after registration we want to redirect our page to the login page after one second let's go ahead and in here let's say else set error will be error occurred while registering and in here let's say 
console.log error and finally below that try and catch method let's say set is loading false now save the changes in here let's say david email will be david at that gmail.com password will be david123 now let's click on the sign up button it's loading registration successful and it takes us to the login page very nice let's check it to the database i am going to refresh it i will scroll down and you can see our new data so it's working perfectly now let's focus on our login page we are going to use next auth for the authentication so i am going to stop our terminal press ctrl c and type npm i next dash auth hit enter again type npm run dev let's go into the package.json file and here you can see we have installed next auth library now let's go ahead and go to the api folder and inside that api folder we need to create a new folder called auth and it should be called auth inside it we need to create one more folder called next auth but we need to add it inside square brackets so square bracket and you need to type dot 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 next auth and then route.js file now make sure to have the same name for these folders and files otherwise it would not work now the first thing we need to do is we need to import next auth so let's say import next auth from next dash auth we are going to use credential providers so let's say import credential providers from next dash auth slash providers slash credentials below that i am going to import bcrypt so let's say import bcrypt from bcrypt below that i am going to import user model so let's say import user from models slash user below that i am going to import mongodb connect so let's say import connect from lib folder and then db now we need to create some auth options so let's create a constant and let's name it auth options equal to and this is going to be an object and inside it we need to have providers so let's say providers and this is going to be an array and inside it we can add all the providers that we are going to be using right now we are just using this credential provider so let's say credential providers parenthesis curly brackets and in here type will be credentials we have to use this type when we use the sign in function and then we need to have the credential here we need to add the details of the input fields but since we are using a custom login page we just leave this credential object blank so below that we need to use a function called authorize so let's type asynchronous authorize in here let's say credential now here we need to write the logic for the login first i am going to connect to the database so let's say await connect below that i am going to collect email and password from the credential so let's say constant email password equal to credentials below that i am going to add try and catch method inside this method let's say constant user equal to await user dot find one and then email here we search it by the email so if there is not a user this means that he had not registered previously so we just throw a new error so let's say throw new error invalid input below that let's say constant 
password match equals to await bcrypt dot compare password comma user dot password we have two parameters right here the first one is normal password which is coming from here and then the second one is hash password which is from the database from here now here if password match is false we are going to throw a new error so in here let's say throw new error passwords do not match otherwise in here let's say constant password dot 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 current user equal to user dot underscore dot below that let's say constant access token equal to i am going to create a new function inside lib folder so in here let's say jwt.js we need to install json web token so i am going to stop our terminal and in here let's say npm i json web token hit enter type npm run dev to run our server again in here let's say import jwt form json web token below that let's say export function sign jwt token payload comma options equal to curly brackets in here let's say constant secret equal to process dot env dot jwt underscore secret now i am going to add this secret inside dot env dot local file so in here let's say jwt underscore secret equal to in here you can write whatever you want like this is my secret now save the changes and close it up below that let's say constant token equal to jwt dot sign payload comma secret comma options now i am going to return token so let's say return token now save it let's go into the auth file now first i am going to import that function so in here let's say import sign jwt token from lib slash jwt i'll scroll down and in here let's say sign jwt token and then i'm going to pass current user and in here let's say expire in seven days then finally i'm going to return dot 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 current user and access token and in here in the catch block let's say console dot log error now now below this providers array i am going to add the page that we are using for the login so right now we are using login page for the login so in here let's say pages sign in will be login below that we need to add secret so let's say secret colon process dot env dot next auth underscore secret let's add this secret inside our environment variable so i'm going to copy this next auth underscore secret let's go into the dot env dot local file and below that let's say next auth secret in here let's say this is next auth secret also i am going to add next auth url so let's say next auth underscore url and that will be localhost 3000 for now now save it now we are going to make one more change to ensure that we have our role available for us in this application so we are going to set up some custom callbacks so below that let's say callbacks 
this will essentially add our role to the token so we can utilize it in our programs you can open up a new tab and go to the next auth website and search for callback i will scroll down and here you can see jwt callback section you can read this section to know more about jwt callback and the session callback so in here let's say asynchronous jwt and then inside it let's say token comma user now if user then token dot access token will be user dot access token and token dot underscore id will be user dot underscore id below that i am going to return token i'll scroll down and below that jwt function let's say asynchronous session in here let's say session comma token don't forget to add comma right here now in here let's say if token is true value then session dot user dot underscore id will be token dot underscore id and session dot user dot access token will be token dot access token and finally i am going to return session now below this auth options right here we need to type constant handler equals to next auth which is coming from here inside it i am going to add auth options which is coming from here and finally i am going to export it so let's say export handler as get comma handler as post now save the changes all right now the next thing is we need to wrap our whole app with a session provider from next auth so here we can see that we have this layout.js file and this wraps our whole app so here we can add our session provider but we need to change this layout file into a client component for that so what we are going to do is we are going to create a different file so inside this app folder let's have a new file called auth provider.js and inside it we are going to add the session provider so first i am going to add use client because we need client component and then i am going to import session provider from next auth slash react below that let's say constant auth provider in here let's say children and session and then i am going to add session provider inside it let's say children and that session provider is going to have a session equals to session and finally i am going to export that auth provider so let's say export default auth provider now save the changes let's go into the layout.js file first i am going to import auth provider so let's say import auth provider from dot auth provider this is all the content of the app so let's wrap this with the session provider so let's type auth provider now i am going to cut navbar children and footer and paste it right here so what we are basically doing is that we are importing the auth provider and we are passing all the children that we have over here so now everything inside the app is wrapped with this auth provider now save the changes okay now let's go into the login form the login component and sign up component are pretty much similar so what we can do is i am going to copy some code from sign up component first i am going to copy this initial state so let's copy this one and paste it right here next i am going to copy this state and paste it right here 
also we need this router we need to import this use writer so let's copy this one and paste it right here I will scroll down we need this handle change paste it right here again I will scroll down we need this method let's create this function so in here let's say constant handle submit and then arrow function we need this on change and value method i will scroll down and paste it right here also here and this one will be password and this one will be email again i will scroll down let's copy this success and error message and paste it right here let's copy this is loading and paste it here this should be login i will scroll up now we can write our handle submit function first i am going to copy handle submit function from sign up form so let's copy this one and paste it right here i will scroll up we don't need this name also we don't need this one so i'm going to remove it i'll scroll down i'm going to remove everything from here now in here let's say constant race equal to await sign in make sure to import sign in from next auth slash react i will scroll down and then in here let's say credentials object email comma password and then redirect will be false below that let's say if race dot error then i'm going to add set error invalid credentials set is loading will be false and then return will be null otherwise i want to push the login page to the block page now save the changes let's test this out first i am going to sign up with a new email in here let's say smith email will be smith that gmail.com and password will be smith123 now let's click on the sign up button registration successful now i am going to log in with that email password will be smith123 now click on this login button and it takes us to the block page now we will restrict the user from going to the login page or sign up page when they are signed in because if we signed in we should not be able to go to the sign up page or the login page so what can we do is let's go into the sign up and then page.jsx file and here let's add a condition and let's check whether we are logged in or not so for that we need to import get server session from next auth okay in here let's say import get server session from next auth we also need to import redirect from next class navigation and finally we need to import auth options so first i am going to export auth option so let's go to the api auth next auth and then route.js file i will scroll up and i am going to export auth option so let's say export now save the changes let's go into the sign up and then page.jsx file i am going to import auth option so let's say import auth options from at that app slash api slash auth slash next auth slash route let's go ahead and in here type let's say constant session equal to await this function should be asynchronous and in here let's say get server session and then i am going to pass auth options below that let's add an if condition so let's say if session 
or if you are logged in then let's redirect to the blog page now save the changes and you can see it takes us to the blog page automatically let's test this again if we click on this sign up link it takes to the blog page very nice similar things we have to do for the login page so i am going to copy everything from here and let's go into the login and then page.jsx file i am going to paste it right here we don't need these two lines so i am going to remove it again let's copy this one and paste it right here now save the changes this should be asynchronous function now save again now you can see it takes us to the blog page automatically now if i click on this login button we would not be able to see the login form because we already log in very nice now we need to add same condition for the navbar so let's go into the component and then navbar.jsx file i will scroll up first i am going to import something so let's say import sign out and use session from next dash auth slash react in here let's say constant data colon session comma status equal to use session i will scroll down and in here let's say if session dot user then i want to render this one otherwise i want to render this one save it and it's working one more thing we need to do is we need to add sign out so i will scroll down in here i am going to add arrow function and i am going to add parenthesis here and also in here let's say sign out parenthesis and then semicolon now save the changes now let's test this out if i click on this log out button that log out now we will be able to go to the login page and sign up page so let's log in again it's working perfectly let me look at the reference design now we can focus on our create blog post so first i am going to create a post api for the blog post to do that we need to create the blog post model so let's do that let's go into the models folder and let's have a new file called blog.js however we have previously created a model for the user so let's copy everything from here and paste it into the block model now let's change this user schema to blog schema name will be title and minimum character will be 4 this one will be description and minimum character will be 20 this one will be excerpt and minimum character will be 10 i will scroll down i am going to delete this one let's copy excerpt and paste it below and this one will be quote minimum character will be 6 below that let's say image and inside that let's say id type will be string and then url type will be a string again i will scroll down and below that image object let's say category type will be a string required true below that i am going to add enum which will be an array again below that category let's say author id type will be mongos dot schema dot types dot object id and reference will be user i will scroll down let's copy this author id and paste it below this one will be likes and type will be array and then mongos dot schema dot types dot object id i want to add on more property let's say default will be empty array 
below that let's say comments array then object let's copy this author id and paste it here and in here let's change it to user and i am going to add here required will be true i will scroll down below that user let's say text type will be string and required true and finally below that text i want to add date type will be date and default will be date dot now now i am going to export that model so in here let's say blog and this one will be also blog and in here let's change it to blog schema now save the changes and close it up now let's go into the api folder and let's have a new folder called blog inside it let's have a new file called route.js so our url will be slash api slash blog so let's copy this one and paste it here and in here let's say blog let's copy these lines and paste it right here i'm going to import block model so in here let's say block we don't need this line anymore so i'm going to delete it below that let's create a function so let's say export asynchronous function and i'm going to create post api in here let's say request first we need to connect to the database so let's say await connect and then we need to verify if user log in or not so to do that we have to check token now the question is how can we get token well we will get token from access token and that will be request dot headers dot get and then authorization below that let's say constant token equal to access token dot split and we are going to split it by a space and get the first why do we do it because it's a bearer itself and then the token so we split it by a space to get an array of two elements separated by comma and when we go for the first index this means the second element and we get the token now we want to verify and decode this token so let's go into the lib folder and then jwt.js file below that i am going to create any function called verify jwt token i want to pass token so in here let's say token inside it i am going to add try catch method and inside this try block let's say constant secret equals to process dot env dot jwt secret and this jwt secret is coming from dot env dot local file right here below that let's say constant payload equal to jwt dot verify and then token secret and finally i will return payload they are not hard function at all we verify token using jwt and finally we return the payload and in the catch block let's say console dot log error and returned will be none now save the changes and close it up and up right here let's import that verify function so let's say import verify jwt token from lib slash jwt now below this token variable let's say constant decoded token equal to verify token and then i am going to pass this token now i am going to add if condition now if the access token is a false value this means that it does not exist it's empty or something or if the decoded token is a false value as well then we will return a new response so in here let's say return new 
response parenthesis and in here let's say json dot stringify error message will be unauthorized wrong or expired token and status will be 403 now if we pass this condition it means that our token is perfectly valid so i am going to add try catch method in here let's say constant body equal to await and then request dot json below that let's say new blog equal to await blog dot create and then i am going to pass body and then we will return a new response so let's say return next response dot json in here let's say new blog and status will be 201 and inside this catch block let's say return next response dot json message will be post error create blog now save the changes now we are going to create our block form so let's go into the create block and then paste.jsx file i am going to remove this div and in here let's have a section tag with the class name of container and i am going to add maximum width inside it let's have an h2 tag with the class name of margin bottom 5 in here let's have a span tag with the class name of special word and in here let's say create and in here let's say block below that is to tag let's have a form tag with the class name of space y5 we don't need this action so i'm going to remove it inside that form i'm going to add input field but we have already created a sign up and login form so we can copy some things or element from them so let's go into the components and then sign up form first i will scroll up let's copy this line and paste it right here let's change it to title this one will be description this one will be excerpt below that let's say quote and then category we have a value of category so i want to here to have a default value of category so in here let's say song birds below that let's say photo let's go into the sign up form i'm going to copy state error success is loading state and paste it right here and then let's copy this router and paste it below i will scroll down let's copy this input component and paste it inside that form tag let's change the label to title this one will be title and value will be state.title and in here i am going to add a placeholder write your title here let's go into the sign up form i will scroll up let's copy this handle change function and paste it here now save it we are getting error so i'll scroll up and in here let's say import input from component slash input now save it i will scroll down now below that input field i want to add text area so first i want to create a text area component so let's go into the components folder and inside it let's have a file called text area dot jsx let's go into the input dot jsx file i am going to copy everything from here and paste it into the text area file okay we don't need this type anymore so i'm going to delete it and in here let's say rows and this one will be rows 
and let's change the input to text area and this one should be text area now save the changes and close it up first i am going to import text area component so in here let's say import text area from components slash text area i'll scroll down i am going to duplicate this input field this one will be text area let's change the title to description this one will be description we don't need this type so in here let's say rows and rows will be four let's duplicate this text area two more times this one will be excerpt so in here let's say excerpt and rows will be two and this one will be code and rows will be two i will scroll down and below that text area i am going to create select tag so let's have a new div inside it let's have a label tag with the class name of block we don't need this html for in here let's say select an option below that label tag let's have a select tag name will be category we don't need this id in here i am going to add on change and value method so i am going to copy this one and paste it right here value will be state dot category give it a class name equals to display will be block rounded and select large one with full i want to add some padding and i want to add background color inside that select tag i am going to have five options so here option multiplied by five the first on the value will be songbirds second one will be waterfall this one will be parrots this one will be seabirds and finally game birds now below that div let's have a new div inside it let's have a level tag and that level tag is going to have a class name equal to display will be block mb2 text small font medium and in here let's say upload image below that level tag let's have an input field type will be file name will be photo and accept will be image below that input field i am going to add an image tag i will scroll up and i am going to import a demo image so let's say import demo image from public slash image slash demo underscore image dot jpg i will scroll down and in here source will be demo image all will be sample image with zero height zero size hundred viewport width and give it a class name equal to w dash 32 and empty dash 5 okay we are getting error because we have to import image from next image so i will scroll up and in here let's say import image from next slash image now save it now we are not getting any error okay now let's go into the sign up form i will scroll down and let's copy this button tag success condition and error condition again i will scroll down and below that div i am going to paste it right here and in here let's say create we don't need this with full so i'm going to remove it now if i write something like success message then you can see the success message over here similarly if i write error message in here you can see the error message over here very nice now our create block page is looking very nice one thing i want to show you that let's go into the blog route.js file we don't need this line so i am going to remove it we need this line so save the changes back to the page.jsx file now to create our blog post we must log in so let's check whether we log in or not 
so in here i am going to import use session so let's say import use session from next auth slash react i'll scroll down and below that router let's say constant data colon session and status equal to i am going to distract from use session below that let's say if status equal to loading then i will return loading below that again if status equal to unauthenticated then i will return access denied next we want to focus on the handle change function here we have an image file so we need to change something so i am going to remove everything from here and in here let's say set error empty below that i am going to distract name value type and files from event dot target now i am going to add if condition so if type equal to file then set state dot 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 state comma name will be files and then first index otherwise i am going to handle text input so let's say set state dot 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 state comma name colon value next we want to focus on the handle submit function so let's say constant handle submit asynchronous function in here let's say event and then arrow function e dot event default below that i am going to distract photo title category description excerpt quote from state below that i am going to add some validation method so let's say if not title or not description or not category or not excerpt or not quote then i want to set error and the error will be please fill out all required fields and then return below that let's say if photo maximum size will be 5 megabyte below that let's say if photo dot size greater than max size then in here i am going to add set error i will scroll down similarly i am going to add set error for the title for the description for the excerpt and for the quote now we are going to using cloudinary to upload our image so open up a new tab and go to the cloudinary.com website here sign up for free if you don't have a sign up previously but i have so i am going to click on this login button and i am going to log in with my credential let's go into the dashboard we need some values like cloud name so i'm going to copy this value by clicking this option let's go into the dot env dot local file and below that next auth url let's say cloud name equal to and then the value below that i want to add upload underscore preset below that i want cloud underscore api underscore key and finally cloud underscore api underscore secret let's copy this api and paste it here again let's copy this api secret and paste it right here next we need this upload preset 
now how can we get that value well now i am going to click on this setting icon and then the upload and then click on this enable unsigned uploading and i am going to add upload preset by clicking this button here you need to make the sign in mode unsigned this is very important part and let's change the name to next js underscore blog images let's copy this name and paste it right here now save the changes also save it right here and you see our preset name now i am going to copy cloud name and upload preset let's go into the page.jsx file i will scroll up and paste it right here i will scroll down and let's go ahead here i am going to add try catch method now in here let's say set is loading true below that let's say set error empty below that let's say set success empty and then i am going to upload image so let's say constant image equal to await i am going to add a function called upload image let's create that function so i'm going to copy this function name i'll scroll down and in here let's say constant upload image equal to asynchronous function so here first we check if we have the photo let's say if not state dot photo that means if the photo does not exist we just return what we have done so far otherwise we transform data and for that we must have form data so in here let's say constant form data equal to new form data parenthesis below that let's say form data dot append to set the file and we paste the photo itself directly so let's say state dot photo additionally we use form data dot append for the upload preset so in here let's say upload underscore preset comma upload preset and this upload preset is coming from here okay don't forget to write constant here i will scroll down below that i am going to add try catch method so let's say try catch error inside this try block i write the following code let's say constant response equal to await fetch backtick https colon slash slash api dot cloudinary dot com slash v1 underscore one slash dollar sign curly brackets in here let's say cloud name slash image slash upload comma curly brackets method will be post method and body will be form data below that let's say constant data equal to await race dot json below that data let's say constant image equal to object id will be data square bracket and then public id and url will be data square bracket secure underscore url and finally i will return the image so let's say return image and in here let's say console dot log error we run the function and get back this image object which we save inside the database that means inside the mongodb we don't save the image directly instead we save the id and the url link that is connected to our image okay we are ready with this so let's go ahead i'm going to write code again inside handle submit function so below that image let's say constant new blog equal to 
टाइटल डेस्क्रिप्शन एक सर्प कोट कैटागरि इमेज एंड फाइनलि आई वन टू एड अथर आई डी नाउ द कोश्चिन इज हाउ कैन उ गेट दिस अथर आई डी वेल उइ कैन गेट अथर आई डी फ्रम सेशन ओके लेट मी शो यू हट आई मिन आई उल स्क्रोल आप एंड इन हेयर लेट से कन्सोल डट लग एंड देन सेशन एंड दिस सेशन इज कमिंग फ्रम हेयर नाउ सेव देंजेस लेट्स गो इन टू द इन्सपेक्ट टुल एंड देन कन्सोल यू कैन सी ए अबजेक्ट हुईच इज कमिंग फ्रम पेज जे सिक्स थार्टी फोर दैट मीन्स दिस लाइन नाउ आई एम गोयिंग टू ओपन इट यू कैन सी यूजार एंड देन द आई डी दैट मीन्स उइ कैन गेट दिस आई डी बै रईटिंग सेशन डट यूजार डट अंडार स्कोर आई डी नाउ सेव द चेन्जेस एंड यू कैन सी द आई डी ओके क्लोज इट आप उ डोट नीड दिस लाइन एनी मोर सो आई एम गोयिंग टू रिमूव इट आई उल स्क्रोल डाउन एंड इन हेयर लेट से अथर आई डी उल बी सेशन क्वेश्चन मार्क डट यूजार क्वेश्चन मार्क डट अंडार स्कोर आई डी बिलो दैट कन्स्टैंट रेसपन्स इक्ल टू एवेट एंड देन द फेज मेथड एंड आई एम गोयिंग टू एड एपीआई एड्रेस सो लेट्स गो इन टू द राउट डट जिस फाइल आई एम गोयिंग टू कपि दिस यूआर एल एंड पेस्ट इट रईट हेयर and then i am going to add headers content type will be application slash json below that authorization will be backtick bearer and then the token and we can get the token from the session so in here let's say dollar sign curly brackets session question mark dot user question mark dot access token below that i am going to add method and that will be post method below that i am going to add body will be json dot stringify and then the new block which is coming from here i will scroll down now in here let's say if response dot status equal to 201 then i want to set success method so let's say set success and the message will be blog created successfully below that let's say set time out 1.5 second and inside it let's say router dot refresh below that let's say router dot push slash block else i want to set error so let's say set error and the message will be error occurred while creating block i will scroll down and inside this catch block let's say console dot log error let's copy this set error and paste it below and finally below that try and catch method i am going to set is loading false i will scroll up we don't need this text anymore i am going to remove it and save the changes again i will scroll down and in this form tag i am going to add on submit method so let's say on submit handle submit now save the changes now if i click on this create button you can see the error message please fill out all required fields which is coming from here one more thing we need to do for the image that i will scroll down in this input field i am going to add on change method so let's say on change and that will be handle change below that let's say state dot photo then i want to show this image so in here let's say i'm going to add a div and inside it i'm going to cut this image tag and paste it right here and the source will be url dot create object url 
and then the state dot photo below that let's say priority now save the changes okay now let's test this out i will scroll up let's copy this title and paste it here let's copy this description and paste it right here also here i will scroll down in here for now let's say this is a quote for testing category will be parrots i'm going to choose auto i'm going to choose part one now finally i am going to click on this create button okay we are getting error so i will scroll up and this should be p use capital letter please and this one will be p now save the changes reload it and let's try this again let's copy this title and paste it here copy this description paste it right here let's copy this excerpt paste it here next let's copy this quote and paste it here i'm going to choose parrots and then i'm going to choose image bird one and finally i'm going to click on this create button again we are getting error okay let's go into our models folder and then block.js file here i did not mention parrot so let's say parrots now save the changes i will scroll up i'm going to stop our server and then delete this next file now run npm run dev i'm going to reload our page now let's test this again okay blog created successfully that ensures that we posted successfully let's go to the database i'm going to click on this blocks and you can see our first blog post very nice let's go to the cloudinary and then media library and here is our image very nice now i want to update our next.config.js file so let's go into the next.config.mjs file and inside this object i'm going to add a property called images and then object remote patterns colon array and then object host name will be race.cloudinary.com now let's copy this one and paste it right here comma protocol will be https and the port will be empty save it now this ensure that only cloudinary images from your account can be served from the next.js image optimization api now close it up next i am going to create more post so let's do that now we have four post and also we have four images very nice let me look at the reference design now we can focus on our block page first i want to create a get api so back to our code let's go into the api and then block and then route.js file 
I will scroll down and below that post API I am going to create a get API so export asynchronous function and then get request we need to connect to the database so let's say await connect below that i am going to add try and catch method let's copy this line and paste it right here in here let's say get error and i am going to remove this one and in here let's say status 500 now inside this try block i am going to fetch all blog posts so let's say constant blocks equal to await and then blog dot find empty object and after that i am going to populate author id so let's say dot populate path will be author id we don't need password so let's say select dash password and finally i am going to sort by writing created at minus one as we need the latest block first below that i am going to return next response dot json and in here let's say blocks so this is our get api now let's implement the get api save it and close it up now let's go into the blog and then page.jsx file up at the top right here i am going to create a function called fetch blocks in here let's say constant response equal to await and then fetch i am going to add url so url address will be this one so i am going to copy this url address and paste it right here and catch will be no store below that i am going to add if condition so in here let's say if not race dot ok then i am going to throw new error so let's say throw new error and that will be failed to fetch data otherwise i will return race.json now let's change it to asynchronous function and inside it let's say constant blocks equal to await and then the fetch blocks function which is coming from here below that let's say console.log blocks now save it now if i reload this page you can see block post in the terminal because this is our server component that's why you can see the block post in the terminal now we want to create our very first block so i am going to create a new file called first block so let's go into the components folder and in here let's say first block.jsx now type rafce press enter save it i am going to import this component inside page.jsx file so up here let's say import first block from component slash first block we don't need this text anymore so i am going to remove it and in here let's say first block self closing tag now save it and you can see first block text which is coming from here let's go into the blog and then page.jsx file we don't need this line anymore so i'm going to remove it and in here let's say constant first blog equals to if blocks then we need first one so let's say blocks zero index that means first element and inside this div let's say blocks question mark dot length greater than zero then i want to render first block otherwise i want to render no blocks 
and then i am going to pass this first block in here so let's say first block equal to curly brackets first block save it let's go into the first block component and in here i am going to destructure our first block so in here let's say first block we don't need this div anymore so i'm going to remove it and in here let's have a section tag inside it let's have a div and that div is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex flex direction column for the medium screen and up flex direction will be row item center and i want to add some gap inside it let's have on more div and that div is going to have a class name equal to width will be full for the large screen and up width will be two fifth that means 40 percent inside it i am going to add an image tag so i am going to import that image so let's say import image from next slash image also i want to import a sample image so let's say import demo image from public slash image slash demo underscore image dot jpg so in here let's say source will be if first block question mark dot image then i want to render first block dot image question mark dot url otherwise i want to render demo image alter will be first block image width will be zero height will be zero and sizes will be 100 viewport width give it a class name equal to width will be full height will be full and rounded will be select the large one now save it inside this section tag i am going to create a link tag and that link tag is going to have an href value so href value will be backtick slash block slash dollar sign and then curly brackets first block question mark dot underscore id and i am going to move this div inside that link and then i am going to import that link so let's say import link from next slash link now below this div let's have a new div and that div is going to have a class name equal to width will be full for the large screen and up width will be 60 percent and i want to add some space vertically so let's say space dash y dash 5 inside that div let's have on more div and that div is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex item center gap 3 and font size will be extra small inside it let's have a paragraph tag in here let's say category give it a class name equal to text color will be primary color so in here we can say first block question mark dot category below that paragraph tag let's have a new paragraph tag and that paragraph tag is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex item center gap one text color will be paragraph color i will scroll up now i am going to import calendar icon so let's say import ai two tone calendar from react icon slash ai let's copy this calendar icon name i will scroll down and in here i am going to paste that calendar name we want to write the date like this so we need to install the moment library so i am going to stop our terminal press ctrl c and run npm i moment hit enter again npm run dev to run our server again i will scroll up in here let's say import moment from moment in here 
let's say constant time first block dot created at and this created at is coming from here below that let's say constant time equal to moment and then time str below that let's say constant formatted time equals to time dot format let's copy this formatted time i will scroll down and below that calendar icon let's say curly brackets and then formatted time save it and you can see the date now below this div let's have a new div with the class name of space dash y dash 2 inside it let's have an h2 tag and in here let's say first blog dot title below that let's have a paragraph tag and that paragraph tag is going to have a class name equal to text small and text color will be paragraph color and inside it i am going to add excerpt so let's say first block dot excerpt now below this div let's have a new div that div is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex item center i want to add gap 3 inside it let's have an image tag source will be if first block question mark dot author id question mark dot avatar question mark dot url then i want to render that url otherwise i want to render demo image walter will be picture of the author below that width will be zero height will be zero size 100 viewport width give it a class name equal to width 40 pixel height 40 pixel and rounded full below that image tag let's have a div with the class name of text extra small inside it let's have an h6 tag let's copy this one and paste it right here and let's change it to name below that h6 tag let's have a paragraph tag with the class name of text will be paragraph color let's copy this one and paste it right here and in here let's say designation now save it let's go into the blog and then paste.jsx file now in here let's have a new div with the class name of container and i'm going to move this first block inside that div and above that first block component let's have an h2 tag and that h2 tag is going to have a class name equal to text align will be center and i want to add some margin vertically inside that h2 tag let's have a span tag with the class name of text dash primary color and in here let's say trending and below that span tag let's say blog now save it now it's looking very nice we are going to add in here a space now it's looking very nice let me look at the reference design now we can focus on this section first inside the component folder let's have a new file called other blocks dot jsx type rafce press enter save it let's go into the blog and then paste dot jsx file i will scroll up first i am going to import that components so let's say import other blocks component slash other blocks i'll scroll down and below that first block in here let's say other block self-closing tag save it 
now i want to create other blocks so let's say constant other blocks equal to blocks dot length greater than zero then i want to slice blocks so blocks dot slice one now i am going to pass these other blocks in here so let's say other blocks equal to curly brackets other block now save it and close it up now i am going to grab that props so in here let's say other blocks let's go into the first block.jsx file i will scroll up i am going to copy these lines and paste it right here let's copy this formatted time and paste it here we don't need this div so i am going to remove it in here let's have a section tag inside it let's have a div and that div is going to have a class name equal to display will be grid grid column one for the medium screen and up grid column three and gap 10 inside it if other blocks dot length greater than zero then i am going to map other blocks so let's say other blocks dot map item and then index inside it let's have a div and that div is going to have a key equal to index inside it let's have a link tag that link tag is going to have an href value backtick slash blog slash and then dollar sign curly brackets item dot id let's go into the first block.jsx file i'm going to copy this div and paste it right here we don't need this class name anymore so i'm going to remove it let's change this first block to item save it okay this one should be other blocks so let's say other blocks save it now you can see the images also we don't need this text so i'm going to remove it i will scroll down now below that image tag let's have a new div that div is going to have a class name equal to space dash y dash 2 let's go into the first block.jsx file i will scroll down let's copy this div and paste it right here this one should be item now save it in here let's say margin bottom 2 again let's go into the first block.jsx file i will scroll down let's copy this title and excerpt and paste it right here and let's change it to item save it again let's go into the first block.jsx file i will scroll down let's copy this div and paste it below let's change the first block to item save it now it's looking very nice on our mobile screen as well as on our large screen very nice so in this position our block page is complete let me look at the reference design now we can focus on our dynamic block so first i am going to create a get api a update api and a delete api now inside the block folder i am going to create a new folder like this square bracket and then id you must use square bracket otherwise it would not work and then inside that folder i am going to create a route.js file now dynamic get api is pretty much similar to the previous get api like the get api for all blog post like this one so what can we do is we are going to copy everything from here let's go into the id and then route.js file and paste it right here but we need to make some changes 
first we need to collect the block id now the question is how can we get the block id well we can obtain that id from the response so in here let's say comma response and below that connect right here let's say constant id equal to race dot params dot id now let's change it to blog and this one will be find by id and in here let's say id we don't need this short so i'm going to remove it and in here i want to populate user comment so let's say populate path will be comments dot user let's copy this select and paste it below i will scroll down in here next response will be blog and status will be 200 next i am to create put api so i will scroll up let's change the post api to put api we need to collect the block id so in here let's say race and in here let's say constant id equal to race dot params dot id you can use new response or we can use next response dot json so in here i am going to remove this one and let's say next response dot json and then error will be unauthorized wrong or expired token and status will be 403 i will scroll down we don't need this line so i am going to remove it and in here let's say constant block will be await blog dot find by id in here let's say id dot i want to populate author id so let's say author id now i am going to add an if condition so let's say if blog question mark dot author id question mark dot underscore id dot to string not equal to decoded token dot underscore id dot to string then i want to throw an error so in here let's say return next respond dot json and the message will be only author can update his or her blog below that let's say status will be 403 otherwise i want to update our post so let's say constant update blog equal to await blog dot find by id and update i want to pass id then dollar sign set will be body and finally new colon true and then i will return this update block so in here let's say update block status will be 200 i will scroll down in here let's say put error we don't need this text so i'm going to remove it and status will be 500 next we need delete api so i will scroll up and i am going to copy put api i will scroll down and below that get api i am going to paste that put api now we need to make some changes so i will scroll up first let's change it to delete because this is our delete api i will scroll down we don't need this line anymore so i am going to remove it in here we can say only author can delete his or her blog again i will scroll down we don't need this line so i'm going to remove it and in here let's say await blog dot find by id and delete and then i will pass that id and in here i will return a message so let's say message successfully deleted blog and in here let's say delete error now save it i will scroll up and the api address will be localhost 3000 slash api slash blog slash some id save it 
Now next create our dynamic page like this one so let's go into the app and then blog now i want to show you how to create a dynamic page first i am going to create a folder inside our blog folder so let's create square bracket and then id and inside that id i am going to create page.jsx file now type rafce press enter in here let's say blog details now save it now the question is how can we get the id so we can get that id from params like this so in here let's say blog details and then params dot id now save it now if i change the url to blog slash one you can see blog details one and this one is coming from right here let's change it to some id you can see some id so this is dynamically changing based on the url so now we are going to focus on our ui design first i am going to import some things like i want to import use effect and use state from react also i want to import image link use session use router moment some icons from react icons demo image and input component we will be using use effect and use state so let's change the server component to client component so in here we can say use client i will scroll down we don't need this line so i am going to remove it let's have a section tag with the class name of container and max dash w dash 3xl inside it let's have a div and that div is going to have a class name equals to display will be flex item center justify end gap 5 inside it let's have a link tag give it an href value for now keep it empty give it a class name equal to display will be flex item center gap one text color will be primary color inside it let's copy this icon and paste it right here below that let's say edit below that link tag let's have a button tag that button tag is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex item center gap one text red 500 inside it let's copy this bs trash icon and paste it right here below that let's say delete next below that div let's have a new div that div is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex flex direction column item center justify center inside it let's have on more div that div is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex flex direction column justify center item center and i want to add some padding vertically so let's say py-10 inside it let's have an image tag for now source will be demo image alter will be avatar image with zero height zero size 100 view with port give it a class name equal to w20 h20 and rounded full below that image tag let's have a div that div is going to have a class name equal to text center inside it let's have a p tag with the class name of text dash white color in here let's say john below that p tag let's have on more p tag in here let's say ceo comma founder now below this div 
let's have a new div with the class name of text center and space y3 inside it let's have an h2 tag in here let's say title goes here for now below that h2 tag let's have a p tag let's say xr goes here below that p tag let's have on more p tag with the class name of flex item center justify center gap 3 inside it let's have a span tag with the class name of text primary color and in here let's say category below that span tag let's have on more span tag with the class name of flex item center and gap 1 inside it i'm going to add an icon so ai2 tone calendar icon below that icon let's add a date for now i will scroll down below this p tag let's have a div inside it let's have an image tag i will scroll up let's copy this property i will scroll down and paste it right here let's change it to block detail image and this one will be with full and height will be full rounded will be rounded dash large and i want to add some padding vertically so let's say py dash 10 now save it i will scroll down now below that div let's have a new div with the class name of text start let's have on more div with the class name of space dash y dash 5 inside it let's have an paragraph in here let's say description goes here i will scroll up now below that div let's have a new div with the class name of py-12 inside it let's have a div that div is going to have a class name equal to display will be flex gap 10 item center text will be extra large justify center inside it let's have on more div with the class name of flex item center and gap one inside it let's have a p tag for now let's say 12 below that i want to add a heart icon so let's say ai fill heart self closing tag give it a size equals to 20 color will be hashtag ed5784 and the cursor will be pointer let's duplicate this line we don't need this color anymore so i'm going to remove it save it i will scroll down let's copy this div and paste it below this one will be ai outline comment we don't need this one anymore so i'm going to remove it we don't need this color and cursor pointer so i'm going to remove it now save it now below that div let's have a new div inside it let's have an h3 tag with the class name of text red 500 in here let's say kindly log in to leave a comment below that let's have a form tag with the class name of space dash y dash 2 we don't need this action anymore so i'm going to remove it inside that form tag i am going to add input component so let's say input give it a name and that name will be comment type will be text and placeholder will be type message below that input component let's have a button tag with the class name of btn and the type will be submit inside that button tag let's say comment now below that form tag let's have a div with the class name of flex gap 3 py5 and items center i will scroll up let's copy this image tag i will scroll down and paste it right here let's change it to w10 
also a is 10 below that image tag let's have a div inside it let's have a paragraph tag with the class name of text white color in here let's say john for now below that p tag let's have on more p tag in here let's say this is our first comment below that div i want to add a delete icon so bs trace cursor will be pointer give it a class name equal to text red 500 and margin left 10 that means 40 pixel okay now we can implement our api so first i am going to implement our get api so i will scroll up in here i am going to add a state so let's say constant blog details comma set blog details equal to use state will be empty below that i want to create a function so let's say asynchronous function fetch block i'm going to add try and catch method inside that try block let's say constant response equals to await and then fetch backtick then i'm going to add url address so let's go into the route.js file i'm going to copy this url and paste it right here now we can get this id from params so in here let's say dollar sign curly brackets params dot id below that let's say constant blog await response dot json below that let's say set blog details block and inside that catch block let's say console dot log error now i want to add use effect and in here let's say fetch block first i want to check that if user log in or not if user log in then i want to show edit and delete button otherwise i would not show edit and delete button now the question is how can we check if user log in or not well we can check by using use session we already used it inside our create block page so let's go into the create block and page.jsx file let's copy this line and paste it here i will scroll down now inside that section tag let's say if block details question mark dot author id question mark dot underscore id dot to string equals to session dot user dot underscore id dot to string then i want to render this div we already log in but you cannot see edit and delete button because we are on the wrong url so let's go into the blog page and then click on this blog post and you can see the edit and delete button very nice next now inside that div let's have a link tag that link tag is going to have an href value and that will be backtick slash user slash dollar sign curly brackets let's copy this one and paste it here give it a class name equal to i want to add hover effect so let's say hover colon bg dash gray 100 and i am going to move this div inside that link tag again i will scroll down now the source will be if blog details dot author id dot avatar dot url then i want to render that url otherwise i want to render demo image let's copy this avatar and paste it right here let's change the avatar to name now save it you can see the actual username but we don't need this hover effect so i will scroll up and let's remove this one save it 
now you don't see the hover effect i will scroll down let's copy this name and paste it right here and let's change it to designation this one will be title so let's say block details title and you can see the title very nice next we want to add excerpt so let's copy this one and paste it here let's change it to excerpt dot 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 save it and you can see our excerpt very nice next we want to add category so in here let's say category you can see the category and finally we want to add formatted date so let's go into the first block.jsx file i will scroll up let's copy this formatted time I will scroll up, paste it right here, I will scroll down and in here let's say formatted time, save it. We are getting error because we have to change first block to block details. Now save it. Now it's looking nice. I will scroll down. Now we are going to add image so I will scroll down and in here let's say if block details dot image then i want to render block details dot image dot url otherwise i want to render demo image now save it and you can see the image very nice now we want to add description let me look at the reference design i will scroll down in the description you can see there is a quote so how can we do that well we can split our description by dot store it in an array and then push the quote inside that array finally we can render that array okay let me show you what i mean i will scroll up i am going to add a function called split paragraph this is not hard function we split the description by a dot and then we push each paragraph to the paragraphs array and finally we will return that paragraphs array. I will provide a source code link in the description so that you can copy this code from there. Let's go ahead I will scroll down. We don't need this p tag so I am going to remove it. In here let's say curly brackets if block details dot description then i want to render a split paragraph and then i want to pass block details dot description and then i want to map our paragraph because we are getting paragraphs from here so i am going to map that paragraph array so let's say map paragraph p index let's have a div give it a key equal to p index inside the div let's say if p index equals to math dot floor inside it let's say split paragraph in here i want to pass description so let's say block details dot description dot length divided by two then i want to render block code give it a class name equal to border left four border color will be primary color border spacing will be six and italic inside that block code let's have a p tag with the class name of ml-5 and in here let's say block details dot code I will scroll down finally in here let's say paragraph which is coming from here now save the changes I will scroll down you can see our description and inside that description there is a code so we successfully push our code inside the description very nice now we want to add some space below that code so in here 
let's say mb that means margin bottom 5 save it now it's looking very nice now we can focus on our edit and delete button first we want to focus on this edit button so i will scroll up and i want to give href value so in here let's say backtick slash block slash edit slash dollar sign curly brackets params dot id now if i click on this edit button it will take us to this url let's try this out if i click on this edit button you can see that it took us to this url however we have not created this page yet so we are getting not found now we want to create this page so let's go into the block folder and inside that block folder let's have a new folder called edit inside it let's have on more folder square bracket id and then a new file called page.jsx now type rafce press enter in here let's say edit block now save it and you can see edit block text which is coming from here very nice but our edit page is pretty much similar to the create block page so what can we do is let's go into the create block and then page.jsx file copy everything from the create block page and paste it inside this edit block page let's change it to edit block i will scroll up this one also will be edit block now save it now we need to make some changes i will scroll up first in here i want to add photo and that will be empty object below that i want to add block id and new image and in here i want to collect params from props now we need to fetch the data of our blog post that we want to edit so let's do that i will scroll down and below that use session i want to add use effect let's have a new function called fetch blog inside it i am going to add try and catch method inside try block let's say constant race equal to await fetch and the url will be let's go into the route.js file let's copy this url and paste it right here let's change it to params.id below that let's say if race dot status equals to 200 then constant block data will be await race dot json below that i am going to set data to the state so let's say set state priv state dot 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 priv state title will be block data dot title i will duplicate this line six more times this one will be description this one will be excerpt this one will be quote this one will be category this one will be photo and finally blog id will be blog data dot underscore id else i want to set error and error will be error fetching block data let's copy this one and paste it right here and finally i am going to call this function so in here let's say fetch block and in here let's say params dot id that means if the id changes then the fetch block function will run again save it we are getting error so i will scroll down in here let's say state dot photo and 
state dot photo square bracket url then source will be state dot photo dot url now save it now you can see the actual data of the block very nice let's go ahead and we need to make more changes so i will scroll up now let's focus on this handle submit function this one will be new image i will scroll down this one also will be new image again i will scroll down now below that set success in here let's say let image below that i am going to add if condition so let's say if state dot new image then image will be upload image also we want to delete our previous block image so in here let's say if state dot photo dot id so what can we do is we can create an actions folder okay let me show you what i mean inside our root directory let's have a new folder called actions inside that actions folder let's have a new file called upload actions dot js in here let's say use server below that i'm going to import cloudinary so let's say import cloudinary from cloudinary below that we need to configure our cloudinary so let's say cloudinary dot config cloud underscore name will be process dot env dot cloud underscore name and this cloud name is coming from here below that api underscore key will be process dot env dot cloud api key below that api underscore secret will be process dot env dot cloud api secret below that i want to create a new function to delete our previous blog photo so in here let's say export asynchronous function delete photo and i will grab public id let's have a try catch method it's very easy just i will return await cloudinary dot v2 dot uploader dot destroy and then i want to pass public id let's go into the package.json file i forgot to install cloudinary so i am going to stop our terminal and type npm i cloudinary hit enter again type npm run dev to run our server close it up and in here let's say console.log error below that let's say return i want to pass error message error dot message now save it let's go into the edit page now i am going to import that function so in here let's say import delete photo from actions slash upload actions i will scroll down now in here i want to use that function so let's say await delete photo and then i want to pass photo id so let's say state dot photo dot id else image will be state dot photo let's go ahead i will scroll down in here let's say update block we need to change this api so first i'm going to add back tick and in here let's say slash params dot id and the method will be put let's change it to update block here response dot status will be 200 because inside the put api we use status 200 
I will scroll down. Let's change it to updated. Router dot push will be block slash params dot id. This one will be updating. I will scroll down. This one will be new image. Also, this one will be state dot new image. Let's change it to edit. Again, I will scroll down. Now, below that input tag, let's say if state dot new image, then I want to render. Let's copy this image tag. Let's have a div, and inside that div, I'm going to paste that image, and source will be URL dot create object url will be state dot new image below that image tag let's have a button tag in here let's say cancel and that button tag is going to have a on click method in here let's say handle cancel upload image let's copy this function name i will scroll up and above the return in here let's say constant handle cancel upload image equal to arrow function set state will be dot 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 state comma new image will be empty i will scroll down otherwise i want to render let's have a div and i am going to move this div inside that div so that means if state dot new image then i will render this div otherwise i will render this div let's go ahead and i will scroll down okay i will scroll up this one will be new image i will scroll down finally this one will be edit now save it let's test this out in here let's say updated in here let's say updated block updated successfully and you can see our block is updated also we can see our updated image i'll scroll down you see the updated text so it's working perfectly very nice let's go to the cloudinary website this one is our old image so i am going to refresh it still we can see our old image so why is that let's check this out i will scroll up this one will be block data dot image because if we go to the database here you can see image not photo now save it and let's test this out again i am going to click on this edit button i will scroll down you can see our image let's choose new image i am going to choose this one we can cancel the image by clicking this cancel button okay let's choose again now click this edit button blog updated successfully now let's go to the cloudinary website refresh it and we don't see the old image this is our new image so very nice next we can focus on our delete button let's go into the dynamic block page in the delete button let's have a on click method i am going to name it handle block delete and i am going to pass image id because we want to delete image so in here let's say blog details dot image dot id let's copy this name i will scroll up and in here let's say constant handle block delete and then arrow function let's change it to asynchronous function and i am going to grab the image id i want to add try catch method first we need to add a confirmation message 
so in here let's say constant confirm modal equal to window dot confirm and the message will be are you sure you want to delete your block below that let's say if confirm modal then set is deleting will be true i want to create this state so i will scroll up and below that state let's say constant is deleting comma set is deleting equal to use state will be false i'll scroll down below that set is deleting let's say constant response equals to await fetch and the delete url so let's go into the blog and then route.js file this is our put api this is our get api and this is our delete api and the url will be this one so i am going to copy this url and paste it right here let's change it to params.id comma curly brackets method will be delete below that i want to add headers authorization will be bearer and then session dot user dot access token i'll scroll down now below this response variable let's say if response dot status equals to 200 then i want to delete image so let's say delete photo make sure that you import delete photo function from actions slash update actions and in here i'm going to pass image id and this image id is coming from here router dot refresh below that let's say router dot push slash block and finally in here let's say set is deleting will be false and inside that catch block let's say console dot log error now save it let's try this out if i click on this delete button we can see the confirmation model i am going to press ok and we deleted our post successfully let's test this again it's deleted successfully very nice let's refresh it that also deleted the images very nice let's go to our website now we can focus on our like button i want to change this icon so i will scroll down so this one should be ai outline heart save it now let's go into the models and then block.js file the concept is when i click on this like button i want to push user id inside that array so we can understand which user likes this post for example in here let's say user id 1 comma user id 2 comma user id 3 so these users like the post now if my user id is user id 5 then if i click on this like button it will add my id like this similarly after liking any blog if i click again then i want to remove the id from that array like this so let's do that i am going to remove this one and keep it empty array now let's go into the app and then api then blog and then id and inside that id let's have a new folder called like inside that folder let's have a new file called route.js because we are going to create a put api 
for the like button let's go into the id and then route.js file and i am going to copy this put api also these lines so let's copy and paste it right here the url will be api slash blog slash blog id slash like i will scroll down i am going to remove these lines we don't need this also we don't need this line we don't need to populate so i'm going to remove it below that let's say if blog dot likes dot includes parenthesis decoded token dot underscore id then blog dot likes will be i want to filter like so let's say blog dot likes dot filter and then id id dot to string is not equal to decoded token dot underscore id dot to string else blog dot likes dot push decoded token dot underscore id below that let's save that block so let's say await blog dot save and in here let's say block now save it now let's implement this update api let's go into the app and then blog then id and then page.jsx file this will be the total number of likes for this block now i want to fetch the number from the get api i will scroll up here seems like we did not use is deleting so i will scroll down in here let's say is deleting then text will be deleting otherwise the text will be delete okay again i will scroll up now i want to add a state is like so let's say constant is like comma set is like equal to use state will be false by default below that let's say constant blog likes comma set blog likes equal to use state will be zero by default this one represents whether the user has liked the content or not and this one represents the total number of like for the blog I will scroll down and in here let's say set is liked and that will be blog question mark likes question mark dot includes parenthesis session dot user dot underscore id below that let's say set blog likes in here let's say blocks dot likes dot length or zero i will scroll down now let's change it to curly brackets blog likes now save it next if the user like the blog i want to show the fill heart icon otherwise i want to show an outline heart icon so in here let's say is liked then i want to show fill heart icon otherwise i want to show outline heart icon we want to add on click method so let's say on click the name of our function will be handle like now let's copy this function and up right here i am going to create that function so let's say constant handle like equal to arrow function to like the blog post the user must be logged in so first we have to check if the user is logged in or not so in here let's say if not session dot user then i want to add alert and the message will be please log in before liking below that let's say return below that if condition 
I am going to add put API. Now I want to add try catch method. Let's change it to asynchronous function. And inside this try block, let's say constant response equals to await fetch. Let's go into the route.js file. I am going to copy this URL and paste it right here. Let's change it to params.id comma method will be put i am going to add headers authorization will be bearer session dot user dot access token below that let's say content type will be application slash json below this header tag let's say body will be json dot stringify null now below this response variables i am going to add if condition so let's say if response dot status equal to 200 then set is liked in here let's say prev not prev below that set blog likes prev in here let's say is like then prev minus one otherwise prev plus one else in here let's say console dot log request failed with status response dot status i'll scroll down and in the catch block let's say console dot log error now save it as you can see the likes are currently zero because nobody has liked this post now if i click on this heart button the button changes to a fill heart and the count changes from zero to one indicating one like now i want to log out I will scroll down now if I click on this like button you can see an alert message please log in before liking okay now I am going to log in with a different username and password now let's test this out if I click on this like button and you can see the count changes from 1 to 2 indicating that everything is working perfectly very nice next we want to focus on this comment section first we want to create a post api and then a delete api so let's go into the api folder and then block folder and then id and inside that id folder let's have a new folder called comment and let's have a new file called route.js i want to copy the create block post api because it has pretty much similar things so let's go into the blog and then route.js file i'm going to copy this post api also these lines and paste it right here now we need to make some changes url address will be blog slash blog id slash comment i will scroll down we don't need this line so i'm going to remove it we need to find this blog so in here let's say constant blog equal to await blog dot find by id and then id below that i'm going to find user so let's say constant user await user make sure that you import user dot find by id and in here let's say decoded dot underscore id below that let's say constant new comment equals to text will be body dot text and user will be user or we can write like this below that let's say blog dot comments dot i am going to use unshipped method 
in here let's say new comment finally i am going to save that block so let's say avid blog dot save and this one will be block we don't need this create block so i'm going to remove it now save it next we want to create this delete api so inside that comment folder let's have a new folder called square bracket and inside that square bracket let's say comment id inside it let's have a new file called route.js let's go into the id and then route.js file i am going to copy this delete api and paste it right here again i am going to copy these lines i'll scroll up and up at the top right here i'm going to paste those lines url address will be block slash block id slash comment slash comment id now we need to make some changes i will scroll down i want to populate user comment so in here let's say populate parenthesis comments dot user below that let's say comment equals to blog dot comments dot find comment arrow function comment dot id equals to comment id now the question is how can we get this comment id we can get this comment id from this response so in here let's say constant comment id equals to Race dot params dot comment id i will scroll down now in here below that comment variable i am going to add if condition so let's say if not comment then i will return a response so let's say next response dot json message will be comment does not exist below that status will be 404 in here we want to make some changes it should be comment question mark dot user and then question mark dot underscore id and in here let's say only author can delete his and her comment let's go ahead and i will scroll down we don't need this line anymore so i'm going to remove it and in here let's say blog dot comments equals to blog dot comments i'm going to add filter method comment arrow function comment dot id is not equal to comment id and finally i want to save that block so let's say avid blog dot save and in here let's say comment now save it now we can implement our api So let's go into the app folder and then block folder and then id and then page.jsx file first i am going to add some state okay so i am going to add comment text state is commenting state and block comments state i will scroll down let's duplicate this line and this one will be set block comments and let's change it to comments now i want to create handle submit function so let's go into the create blog and then page.jsx file i'll scroll down now let's copy this handle submit function let's go into the block id and then page.jsx file i'll scroll down and above that return just paste it now we need to make some changes i am going to name it handle comment submit we don't need this line so i'm going to remove it now this one will be if not comment text then set error will be comment text is required i'll scroll down we don't need this if condition so i'm going to remove it let's change it to set is commenting we don't need this new blog image and set success in here i'm going to create a new variable called new 
comment equals to text will be comment text we need to change this api first i am going to change it to back tick and in here let's say slash dollar sign params dot id slash comment and this one will be new comment so let's copy this new comment variable and paste it right here i'll scroll down let's change it to comment created successfully we don't need these two lines in here let's say set comment text will be empty below that i want to fetch blog again and let's change it to 500 also let's change it to comment and this one will be set is commenting now let's use this function so i will scroll down if user login then i don't want to show this message so in here let's say if not session dot user then i want to render this message similarly if user login then i want to show this form so in here let's say if session dot user then i want to show this form now save it you see the form because we already log in let's go ahead in here i am going to add on submit method so let's say on submit and the function will be handle comment submit and in here i am going to add on change method and in here let's say set comment text e dot target dot value and the value will be comment text i will scroll down in here let's say is commenting then the text will be loading otherwise the text will be comment below that in here let's say blog details dot comments and blog details dot comment length so in here let's say blog details dot comments dot length equal to zero then i want to render no comments so let's have a p tag and in here let's say no comments i'm going to duplicate this condition now if blog details dot comment dot length greater than zero then i am going to map the comments so i am going to remove it in here let's say blog details dot comments dot map parenthesis comment arrow function now i am going to move this div inside it in here i am going to add key method and the key will be comment dot underscore id and the source will be if comment dot user dot avatar dot url then i want to render this url otherwise i want to render demo image i will scroll down let's change it to comment dot user dot name and this one should be comment dot text now save it let's test this out this is my first comment okay we are getting error set error set error is not defined okay i will scroll up below that block comment states i am going to add a new state called error so let's say constant error set error equals to UG state by default it would be empty now save it let's test this again first comment okay it's still not working i want to check our api so let's go into the api then blog then id and then comment 
and then route.js file I will scroll down in here we are using id but we did not add id variable so in here let's say race and in here let's say constant id will be race dot params dot id now save it back to our page.jsx file also in here i am going to add on more state so let's say constant success set success equals to use state will be empty now save it let's try this again first comment and you can see our comments very nice now let's dynamic the comments number i will scroll down let's change it to block comments now save it let's try this again second comment and you can see our second comment very nice now i am going to focus on this delete button i'll scroll down this is our delete icon now i am going to add condition so in here let's say session dot user dot underscore id equal to comment dot user dot underscore id then i want to render this delete button and that delete button is going to have a on click method so let's say on click arrow function and the function name will be handle delete comment and then in here i am going to pass comment id so let's say comment dot underscore id let's copy this function name i will scroll up in here let's say constant handle delete comment equal to asynchronous function comment id i will scroll up let's copy this try catch method and paste it below now we need to make some changes we don't need these lines anymore let's change the url in here let's say slash comment id method will be delete we don't need this body i'll scroll down we don't need this if condition so i'm going to remove it in here let's say if response dot status equal to 200 i want to run fetch block function else console dot log in here let's say request failed with status then response dot status and finally we don't need this line now save it now let's test this out if i click on this delete button that deleted our comment very nice let's test it again it's working perfectly very nice in this position our dynamic block is complete now we can focus on our profile page first we are going to change the url of the profile page so let's go into the components folder and then navbar now the href value will be curly brackets and then backtick slash user slash dollar sign session dot user dot underscore id dot to string now save it now click on this profile link we are getting not found because we did not create the page yet user profile would be dynamic page so we want to create an id folder so let's go into the app folder and then the user folder and inside that user folder let's have a new folder called id and then page.jsx file 
type RAFCE press enter in here let's say user profile now save it now you can see user profile text first we want to create some API for the user profile so let's go into the API folder and inside that API folder let's have a new folder called user and then ID folder and then route.js file but the profile APIs are pretty much similar to the blog details API so what can we do is we can copy everything from here and paste it inside the profile API now we need to make some changes the URL will be API slash user slash some ID next we want to import user model let's change the put api to patch api i will scroll down we don't need this line so i'm going to remove it and in here let's say user will be await user dot find by id and then id let's change it to user dot underscore id in here let's say only author can update his or her data let's go ahead i will scroll down in here let's say update user this one will be user let's change it to user underscore id and this one will be body let's copy this variable and paste it right here and the message will be patch error next let's focus on this get api we don't need this block so i'm going to remove it and in here let's say constant user will be await user dot find by id in here let's say id dot select we don't need password and underscore underscore v let's copy this user and paste it right here now we can focus on our jsx part so let's go into the page.jsx file we want to create a new component called profile details so in here let's have a new file called profile details.jsx type rafce press enter i am going to use capital p now save it let's go into the page.jsx file I'm going to import that component so let's say import profile details from dot profile details we need this text anymore so I'm going to remove it and in here let's say profile details self closing tag now save it next I'm going to fetch user data let's go into the block folder and then paste.jsx file I'm going to copy this function and paste it right here let's change it to get user data in here let's say params we don't need this url so in here let's say backtick let's go into the route.js file i am going to copy this url and paste it right here this one should be dollar sign params.id below that in here i am going to destructure params inside that user profile let's say constant profile equals to await get user data and then i am going to pass params let's change it to asynchronous function finally i am going to pass profile and params now save it let's go into the profile details file i am going to grab profile and params this component will be client component so let's change it to client component so up at the top right here let's say use client now i am going to import some things like use state use router sign out and use session image moment modal we did not create modal component yet but we will do it very soon next we need delete photo 
input component demo image and close icon now i am going to create this model component so let's go into the components folder let's have a new file called model.jsx type rafce press enter i am going to destructure children modal open and set modal open we don't need this text anymore so i'm going to remove it in here let's say if modal open then i am going to render this div and that div is going to have a class name equals to bg dash black divided by 50 position fixed and inset 0 inside it let's have a new div with the class name of flex justify center item center and height full inside it let's have a new div that div is going to have a class name equals to max dash age dash 90 percent for the medium screen and up maximum width will be large overflow auto display flex flex direction column items end background color will be secondary color and i am going to add some padding inside it let's have a button tag in here let's say ampersand times colon and that button tag is going to have a on click method in here let's say set modal open will be false give it a class name equals to text dash to excel and margin bottom 3 below that button tag let's say children now save the changes and close it up now we need cloud name and upload preset of the cloudinary so i am going to add cloud name and upload preset next i am going to add some state like profile to edit state avatar to edit state open model edit state open modal delete state is loading state error state success state is deleting state and then we need use session and use router i will scroll down now below that router let's say if not profile then return will be access denied otherwise we will return this one so we don't need this text anymore so i am going to remove it give it a class name equals to i am going to add some padding some margin vertically inside it let's have a new div with the class name of text center text primary color and pb-20 inside it let's have an h2 tag in here let's say profile below that div let's have a new div with the class name of flex flex direction column for the medium screen and up flex direction will be row and gap 5 inside it let's have on more div with the class name of flex 1 and space dash y dash 3 inside it let's have an h4 tag with the class name of text excel in here let's say about me below that h4 tag let's have a paragraph tag in here let's say profile dot about below that div let's have a new div with the class name of flex 1 display flex item center and justify center inside it let's have an image tag that image tag is going to have a source and the source will be profile dot avatar dot url or demo image alter will be avatar width will be zero height will be zero size is 100 viewport width give it a class name 
W40, H40, rounded full, border 2, border black. Now below that div, let's have a new div with the class name of flex1, space y3. Inside it, let's have an h4 tag with the class name of text excel. In here, let's say details. Below that h4 tag, let's have a div with the class name of space y1. Inside it, let's have a paragraph tag. In here, let's say email colon. Below that paragraph tag, let's have on more paragraph tag. And in here, let's say profile dot email now i am going to do the same thing for the name age location and joining date now we need to create this function so i am going to copy this one i will scroll up in here let's say constant time format equals to arrow function constant time string equals to profile dot created at below that let's say constant time equal to moment time string below that let's say constant formatted time equals to time dot format in here let's say month day and year finally i am going to return formatted time now save it and you can see the name age location and joining date i will scroll down now below that div let's have a new div with the class name of pt5 inside it let's have a button tag that button tag is going to have a class name equals to text color will be primary color and i am going to add margin right 3 i am going to add on click method arrow function set open modal edit will be true and in here let's say edit below that button tag i am going to add modal component that modal component is going to have modal open equals to open modal edit give it a set modal open equals to set open modal edit inside it let's have a form tag with the class name of with full and space dash y dash 3 inside it let's have an h2 tag with the class name of text to excel text primary color and i am going to add some padding and in here let's say profile i will scroll up for now let's say open model edit true now save it and you can see our model i'll scroll down go ahead and let's complete the user form below that is to tag let's say if avatar to edit is true then i want to render this div with the class name of flex justify center items start otherwise i want to render this div with the class name of display flex and justify center now let's go into the app folder and then blog folder and then edit folder and then paste.jsx file i'll scroll down let's copy this image tag and paste it right here i want to make some changes source will be url dot create object url and in here let's say avatar to edit we don't need this priority property alter will be avatar class name will be width 20 height 20 rounded full border 2 and border black below that image tag let's have a button tag 
that button tag is going to have a class name equals to text red 500 and inside it i am going to add close icon also in here i am going to add on click method and the function name will be handle cancel upload image let's copy this function name i will scroll up and in here let's say constant handle cancel upload image arrow function set avatar to edit will be empty i will scroll down and inside this div let's say profile dot avatar and profile dot avatar square bracket url then i am going to render this div i will scroll up let's copy this image tag i'll scroll down and paste it right here the source will be profile dot avatar dot url i will scroll down now in here let's have a new div let's go into the edit page dot jsx file i am going to copy this input field and paste it right here give it a class name equals to display will be block with full border and border color will be gray and rounded select large one we are getting error handle change is not defined so let's go to the edit page i will scroll up let's copy this handle change function again i will scroll up and paste it right here we need to make some changes we don't need this line in here let's say set avatar to edit files and then zero index also we don't need this line in here let's say set profile to edit priv state dot 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 priv state comma name will be value now save it now we are not getting any error i will scroll down now below that div let's have a input component name will be name type will be text placeholder will be name value will be profile to edit dot name or empty below that i am going to add on change method and that will be handle change now i am going to do the same thing for the designation about age and for the location let's go into the edit page i will scroll down let's copy this success and error condition and paste it below below that success condition let's have a div with the class name of space dash x dash 5 let's go into the edit page let's copy this button tag and paste it right here and let's change it to update we need cancel button so below that button let's have a new button tag in here let's say cancel give it a class name equals to btn and bg rate 700 i am going to add an on click method arrow function and in here let's say set open modal edit will be false now if i click this cancel button that close the modal very nice we want to show this button only for the login user so in here i am going to add a condition so let's say profile dot underscore id equals to session dot user dot underscore id then i am going to render this button tag so we are going to create handle edit submit function so that we can update our user data so let's go into the blog edit page i will scroll up and let's copy this handle submit function and paste it right here 
now we want to make some changes the function name will be handle edit submit in here let's say set error will be empty i will scroll up let's copy this state i will scroll down and paste it right here and i am going to destructure name about designation age and location we don't need this one in here let's say name so if not name then the error will be name is required let's change the new image to avatar to edit and let's change it to 2 megabyte i will scroll down we don't need this if condition so i am going to remove it let's change the image to profile image and let's change it to avatar to edit and this one will be profile image let's change it to profile dot avatar dot id let's copy this one and paste it right here let's copy this profile image and paste it right here and this one should be profile dot avatar i'll scroll down let's change it to update user i will scroll up let's copy this name about designation age and location i will scroll down and paste it right here below that location avatar will be profile image the url should be api slash user slash params dot id let's copy this update user and paste it right here and method will be patch again i will scroll down let's change it to user updated successfully we don't need this set timeout so i'm going to remove it let's change this block to user and in here i'm going to add finally block set success will be empty set error will be empty set is loading will be false set open model edit will be false set avatar to edit will be empty and finally router dot refresh we don't need this line anymore so i'm going to remove it i will scroll up now we need this upload image function so let's go to the edit page and let's copy this upload image function i will scroll down and paste it right here i will scroll up let's change it to avatar to edit let's copy this one and paste it right here i will scroll down now we are going to add on submit method and the function name will be handle edit submit now save it let's test this out i am going to choose photo in here let's say david miller designation will be ceo i am going to add some about age will be 25 and location usa now if i click on this update button you can see our avatar image also the updated data very nice now one thing i want to show you that if i change the avatar image again let's change the avatar image i will scroll up reload it in here still we don't see the avatar image because this is our static image so we have to fix that let's go into the components folder and then navbar.js file first i am going to import use effect and i am going to add a state called user data comma set user data equals to use state and empty object we don't need this login so i am going to remove it 
and in here i am going to create a asynchronous function let's say fetch user i am going to add try catch method inside try block let's say constant response is equal to await and then fetch let's go to the route.js file i am going to copy this url and paste it right here in here let's say dollar sign curly brackets session question mark dot user question mark dot underscore id below that let's say constant response data will be await race dot json below that let's say set user data and in here let's say race data inside catch block let's say console dot log error and finally below that fetch user function i am going to add use effect inside it i am going to call fetch user function and in here let's copy this user id and paste it right here i will scroll down image source will be if user data dot avatar dot url then i am going to render avatar url otherwise i am going to render demo image we need to import this demo image so i will scroll up in here let's say demo image from public slash image slash demo underscore image we are getting error because we have to use with property so i will scroll down in here let's say width will be zero and height will be zero now save the changes now you can see our avatar image very nice let's update the avatar image again reload it and you can see the update image very nice in this position our website is complete thanks for watching this video hope you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and hit that like button and subscribe our channel also i would love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below let me know what you liked about the video or if you have any suggestions for future content see you in the next video